No, but, Colonel, why couldn't I leave tomorrow by plane? Yes, I know about the order, sir, but this is very important to me. Of course, I realize my responsibility to my men, sir. But... Yes, and I know all that, sir. All right, sir. Yes. I'll be at the dock at 11 o'clock. Lieutenant Harry Fraser, Her Majesty's Infantry. His trouble has brought him here to the Street of the Cat, in the middle of tumultuous Hong Kong. The street of the Cat. It has long been a routine stop for every wide-eyed tourist. But for Lieutenant Harry Fraser, it will soon become far from routine. Honorable visitors, here is the street of the cats. Here since olden days have been those who seeing nothing are said by some to see all. Observe, please. Neholomaba. Oh, Neholomaba. If you have a question you wish answered, you may ask the old man. He will write the answer on a piece of paper with a pointed stick. Oh, but a stick won't make a mark. You have spoken well, madam. You must then take the piece of paper to a young child. He will trace in pencil what the old one drew with a stick. He who sees not draws what cannot be seen. And he who is too young to understand writes. And thus it is said, is the truth known. Anyone would like to try it? Only 12 Hong Kong dollars. Not me. Gives me the creeps. Looks like Olvera Street. Not as clean, though. Uh, oh, where do we go next? We go to Kowloon Road, where there are many jade shops. All follow me, please. Well, Hong Kong dollars for a blind man with a stick one. That's almost two American dollars. They must think all tourists are suckers. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. Sheer hocus pocus. Oriental superstition. Well, now, who knows? Maybe. How could a blind man with a stick possibly help a soldier in trouble? Indeed, who knows? In Hong Kong, all things are possible. And nothing is what it seems to be. Not life. Not death. Last night, Lieutenant Fraser's life was very different. Last night, Hong Kong was beautiful. Beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. Very beautiful. Wiley, listen. Will you remember me tomorrow night? Will you remember what you can no longer see? What do you mean? Your regiment is going home, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? Yes, it's true. The regiment's going home tomorrow night. But those orders are secret. <laughs> you Englishmen never understand Hong Kong. Secrets are our stock and trade, like watches in Switzerland. Except that a watch exists after being traded by the secret, just... How long have you known? It was all over the hospital. The other nurses tried to keep it from me. But I guess that from the way they looked at me, they were so sad and so... triumphant. How long? Two weeks. You mustn't be sorry. These last three months, I will never forget them. And I knew when it began, it could never be more than... than something never to be forgotten. You were wrong. Please, darling, 
We don't need explanations. Can't we just say, what do the Americans say? Fan while it lasted? Myling, listen to me. I haven't got much time. Yes, I am going back to London tomorrow night. And yes, it was fun while it lasted. Perhaps when we first met, that was all I wanted. But I want a lot more than that now. I want it to be forever. Myling, I love you. Marry me. It's all here. Officer's request for permission to marry approved. The ring, the license, officer's request for wife's transportation, you'll have to sign that after we're married. I like the sound of that, don't you? After we're married? Harry. What's the matter? Uh, look here. You do love me, don't you? I mean... Well, maybe I've taken a lot for granted. If you don't love me, just say so and we can forget the whole thing. It's not that. Well, what is it then? You are free, aren't you? I mean, you've never mentioned anyone and you're not wearing a ring. But I don't know. I don't know the customs here. There's no one else, Harry. Then what is it? Don't you know? No, I don't. I love you. You say you love me. But when I ask you to marry me, you won't say yes. Look at me, Harry. I'm looking. What do you see? I see the girl I love. Do you see your wife? Can you hear yourself saying, Colonel, may I present my wife? Can you hear the whispers? Poor Fraser. Poor Fraser. The world has grown up since Madame Butterfly's time, dear. Not that much. The day would come when you lose a promotion because of me. And you hate me for it. Stop it. Of course, if I were marrying to help my military career, I'd, I'd marry an English girl. Preferably a general's daughter. With a brother in politics and a rich uncle who had no children of his own and simply a daughter. But I'm one of those unrealistic backward types. Who prefers to marry the girl he loves. Don't make fun of me, Harry. You haven't answered me, you know. Do you love me? That's all that matters. Do you? Too much to... No, not too much to anything. Just yes or no. Myling, darling, I love you. I want to marry you. Do you love me? Harry... Mr. Long, is anything wrong? No, no, nothing is wrong. Forgive my intrusion, please. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Long, live at end of hall, take care of building. What can I do for you, Mr. Long? How do you do, officer, sir? Is it correct? <laughs> I see a British officer come and go many times. I think Myling likes British officer. Good enough for me. I like British officer too. I'm delighted to hear it. <laughs> now British officer is going away. Well, how does he know? So I bring rice wine, traditional drink of traveler. Bring good luck on voyage and also taste good. You will honor me by drinking? Of course he will. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You drink? It's very good, Mr. Lum. I hope you both have a wonderful trip. Both? Until this moment, I did not know she keeps secret good. What is he talking about? Myling drink, drink of traveler. Oh, so did you. I am host. Host must drink, drink of traveler. Host and traveler. <laughs> no one else. Congratulations to both of you. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wish you long life and happiness. Thank you very Lots much. of children. <laughs> Is that the truth? I mean, about the toast? Yes, darling. Oh, oh you had me scared to death. Oh. Eileen! Eileen, darling, hurry. We have much to do. Eileen. Good morning, officer. Where is Eileen? Myling, she's not with you? Obviously, she's not with me. She got moving cart and took everything down the street. When? Maybe six or seven this morning. Very early. As I looked out the window, I saw the cart going away. Did she tell the driver where she was going? Maybe, but I didn't hear. I couldn't go down because I'm not dressed. She's not with you. She has gone someplace, but where? Do you have any idea? If you don't know, how should I? I've got to find her. It was 10 a.m. when Lieutenant Harry Fraser began his search for Miley. Without a clue, it was an impossible task. One only a man in love would even attempt. Blimey, I mean, how many more times do I have to tell you? I'll be back in a month. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Sergeant? I've got to stop talking now. I've got some more packing to do. Now, stop crying. I'll be back in a month and I'll bring you something pretty. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Are you sure the Colonel's coming back here? Yes, sir. You know, sir, these Oriental types really cling. It'll be the longest month in the Chinese calendar. I thought you said he'd be here an hour ago. I told you just what the Colonel told me, sir. Of course, I guess the Colonel's got a few good boys to say, too. If you know what I mean, sir. <laughs> uh, no offense, sir. Well, sir, Hong Kong's okay for a while, but... I don't know, it'd be a bit of all right to get back to some pink cheeks and a few blue eyes. Are you sure you don't know where I can find him? I haven't a clue, sir. Sergeant? Yes, sir. What is the last possible minute I can arrive at the dock? Well, you know how the Colonel is, sir, about regulations. Eleven o'clock is eleven o'clock. Sergeant? Call me the minute he arrives. I'll be at the Sisters of Mercy Hospital. Yes, sir. It's terribly important. Very good, sir. It was 8 o'clock when a despairing Lieutenant Fraser returned to the convent hospital. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Have you had any luck? I've been every place you suggested, and nothing. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what to do. I've got to find her. We all love my Ling, Lieutenant. I remember the day she came here from her village. Shy, frightened, awkward. And she had a sensitivity, a reserve. She could not bear to hurt. Or be hurt. She'd sooner die first. Why would I hurt her? By forcing her through love to leave a world in which she felt safe for a world of uncertainty and fear. Isn't love supposed to be stronger than fear? Has not my Ling given you the answer to that, my son? This is very important to me. Of course I realize my responsibility to my mentor. But... Yes, and I know that, sir. All right, sir. Yes. I'll be at the dock at 11 o'clock. Well, the Hong Kong dollars for a blind man with a stick bike, that's almost two American dollars. They must think all tourists are suckers. How ridiculous.
speak English? Many tongues. You may ask. I have one question to ask. Yes. I will try to help you. Tell me. Tell me, where is my Ling? And if what I see cause your eyes to weep, so when die, you will have shed as many tears as you have drawn breaths. I must know. This is my grandson. Has he his crayon? Yes. As you know. He's here and he did it to you. 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 She can't be. Did I not warn that truth can bring pain? Tell me, where is this place? Hong Kong has many, many houses of dead. For is not everyone poor? Do we not live all our lives in rags and coal? But when death comes close, for a few coins, one can have a clean room a clean bed to die with dignity. Many, many house of dead. How many? Ten, twenty? I'll go to them all. I would think twenty times twenty and more. And more. Twenty times twenty and more and Lieutenant Fraser had less than two hours in which to find My Ling. And if he found her in a house of the dead? For Lieutenant Fraser, time was running out. Twenty times twenty, and more. Rixa! Take me to the docks. Now, it is 10.25. We are here, sir. I told you to the docks. House of the dead.
Search, I've gone, I've looked, I, I've been frantic without you. Oh, Miley, I love you. I love you so much. Come with me. Marry me. Yes. It is a custom to make paper models of whatever a man might need, his tools and so on, and burn them now so that he might have them in the next world. When did he die? Tell me! About 50 minutes ago, why? Did you know him? I mean, from before. No. And yet... In a way, yes. There was so little I could do for him. He was almost dead. He was so grateful that I sat by his bed so he wouldn't die alone. He asked me to talk to him so he would not think of his pain. Talk to him about anything. I could talk about nothing except, well, you and me. How selfish of me. Then, Something very strange happened at the end. He had been too weak to even breathe. But suddenly he got so strong, his voice was so strong, he startled me. He said, Do you love this man? I mean, truly love him beyond all doubt, beyond all care. At that instant, he fell back dead. He never heard me say, yes. Oh, yes. Didn't he hear? Students of psychic phenomena, whose job it is to prove or disprove, have reported many instances when those who are making the transition between existence and non-existence, as we know it, are sometimes given the power to perform a last act of grace before moving on to whatever is next. In a moment, something about next week. <laughs> 